Are you ready? Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Idiot Podcast. Hi. Idiot. <laughs> hey, idiot. <laughs> Do I look weird? Uh, always. Just kidding. Because, I mean, this was my summer outfit and this yeah. is my winter outfit. I combined them. Honestly, it's a vibe. <laughs> I support it. Okay, good. Yeah. Do I look weird? No, you look great. Okay. So, welcome. I always forget this. You're so much better at it. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe right like you that. say that out up front yeah okay whatever so here we are what do you think of our new set <laughs> who made this i did this was steven's idea to do reoccurring podcast episodes together for each of our podcasts was i apprehensive yes <laughs> yes i was you were you kept saying i'll do it and then i won't do it and then i'll do it and then i won't do it because i think that um ultimately i think it's good that we have conversations and communicate and yeah weirdly <laughs> enough it's it's a it's a fun way to connect it is because we you know? only we only really talk about the kids when we're not doing this <laughs> that's true right? that's true yeah, yeah absolutely i saw your podcast well i saw your podcast with uh, i didn't see it but i saw the thumbnail of your podcast with your niece yeah i bet that was fun she's so funny she's i want to watch it yeah the kids ones are really cute kids are crazy they're <laughs> insane they are so what the hell is going on what the hell is going on well i don't know what the hell is going on what's going on i'm going to austin when are you leaving tomorrow tomorrow yeah. really yeah for how long three days okay going to joe rogan's comedy club wow hell yeah I that's am. amazing right? it's funny like i'm getting a lot of people asking me to like speak out you know because of your content right and I have I don't tend to watch your content just because sometimes it can be triggering. Right. But a lot of people are saying like that you're doing transphobic stuff and I mean that's that word is thrown around so much that it doesn't mean anything anymore. Right. The word transphobic doesn't mean anything because it's just thrown at everyone. The bigger racist transphobe if you say something that they that the 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 woke disagree with they just chuck those three things at you. And it's crazy. They do it to Russell Brand. They do it to Jordan Peterson. Really? Yeah, it's crazy. It's well, crazy. Well, I should say that I do support the LGBTQ plus community. You do. I know you do. I do. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that sexual orientation or gender identity should lead to any sort of abuse or discrimination. So I, I want to say that because I think that people assume that we have the same viewpoints we're right? pretty different in that but i will say one thing um just for your audience because mm -hmm. they're the ones that come after me a little bit i think about this stuff yeah i get a lot of hate from, from yeah. your fans i'm not against trans people mm -hmm. i'm against the agenda that they that the, the i feel like trans the trans community have been hijacked by an agenda which is pretty much el from the elite down Mm. the way it's all corporate sponsored and the way they push this mm. agenda in in kids faces mm. and in people's faces like you can't get away from it mm. that's what i'm against no, nothing to do with individual people no i have got no problem with mm -hmm. individual people the agenda that i do have a problem with. and you that. never did when we were together there was never any of that i wanted to work with a trans singer i was yeah, trying to find a I trans know. singer i don't have any problem with trans people at all and i i think too that you know, the fact is we keep our intentions really clear. And the most important thing is, is how we co-parent and um, how we raise our kids. So we can be on different sides politically and still get along and yeah. still respect one another yeah. and still know what our primary purpose is, which is like raising our kids yeah. and also not pushing our views on our children no. either, like no. letting them can do whatever they decide want. for themselves yeah. you know yeah absolutely there was, a, there was a funny video that i saw of a guy. what do you think about this that it was funny to me is this the one where the guy <laughs> yeah i was upset with you really? about about that so basically there was a video where a guy we're talking about the same one right in the car yeah so the dad was filming his toddler literally a three-year-old going I am Kobe. I am a straight white, white boy. boy. Yeah. I am Kobe. I am a straight white boy. Yeah. Like getting him to affirm that. Yeah. 
The thing I didn't like about that yeah. was why are you telling him he's straight? Why are you telling him he's any sexuality? You're sexualizing a toddler. Because I feel like he's going to be told from all other angles of of the of school and stuff like that that he's he's confused about that. Okay, but to say you're straight to a toddler, you're right. sexualizing a toddler. That's that should not be come into conversation until they're. But that's exactly what the outdoor LGBTQ puberty. activists do: sexualize kids. They're not saying you're gay, you're gay, you're gay Are when they they're not? Th when they're three years old. Right. So that's what I didn't like about right. that. Okay. You know. It's like it was the sexualization. Well, yes. I, mean, I don't feel like I feel like it, he was making a point. It was funny. He's it's as well. it's it's it's, it's homophobic because he's <laughs> yes it is yes it is because he's saying, well he's saying that he wants his son to be straight. Yes. Why the fuck does he care who he's attracted to when he's older? Why does that make a difference? I think for a, for a guy uh, he. I can understand why he would want his kid to be, why his boy to be straight. I can, t I can totally understand that. I don't think there's anything wrong with being gay, but he could have a preference. And he's going to push that on his son. You're straight. You're straight. You're straight. Well, some so parents that, push transness on their kids. I've seen it. Okay. I, 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 in all my years of living, have not once seen a trans person pushing their kid to be trans. I got or, videos of it. I've got literal videos of it. Okay, well, I haven't known, I haven't seen right, that personally. Right, right. Okay. I yeah. think like pushing sexuality on a child is wrong. Yeah, but what about <laughs> the books that they have at schools that are all sexual for kids? I don't, I don't know. You mean like sex education stuff? Yeah. I mean, I remember in high school, last learning about sexuality, but I don't remember too much of it because I was stoned. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything yeah. about it. We didn't have sex education at my school. Really? No, because it was considered that the parents should teach it, which I actually think is The parents right. should teach yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Did your parents teach yeah. it? Yeah, my dad really? took me for a walk on the beach. I'll never forget it. Get out of here. And he told me about the birds and the bees. And all I could think of was, oh, no, my mum and dad did it. Oh, really? yeah. That's all I could think. But did he use the birds and bees analogy? No, he was very... Uh, he said, like, yeah. the penis goes... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he, he did See, really that's well. that's really cool. I would like to do what my dad did. Yeah. I'd like to model that because it, it was very... It was... He was just very direct. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't confused yeah. about it. And uh, yeah. But can you see how saying... Telling your toddler he's straight is a problem? I, or, or gay or anything. No sexual orientation should be pushed upon a toddler okay but here's a yeah. broader point i don't i, I agree with that okay. but the broader point about it is that it's funny it's a it's a funny video it's a joke so well, you're not we allowed to make that. a joke about we don't know it. that but is that is it okay to make a joke out of lgbtqia issues and if not why not i mean i guess it just depends right it just depends, like... Because you can say as... Like, a, I didn't find that video funny. I found right. that kind of disturbing. You didn't. I... I yeah. I found it yeah. disturbing. Right. Yeah. But it's funny how you can make jokes about anyone online, mm -hmm. but the minute you talk about Dylan Mulvaney, your video gets taken down. Mm. Mm. That, I feel, is But why censorship. do you have a problem with Dylan Mulvaney? I don't, but I have a problem. If the tolerant left saying you should tolerate everything, mm -hmm. they should also tolerate Dylan Mulvaney getting taken the piss out of. I guess that's considered hate speech. You know? Well, who's, who decides what's hate speech? Well, if, it's, if they're, you know, being hateful towards Yeah, but when I was growing up, there were Irish jokes. And I would take those straight <laughs> you down. Wouldn't. I would take those you straight wouldn't. down. You wouldn't take them down. You wouldn't. <laughs> That's why I love Twitter. Well, because I'm Irish, so I can. Well, uh, yeah, you're not okay. Irish. My, all right, no, no, I'm not truly, but like my even slightly. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you say? We've been having this fight for literally over a decade. Yeah. Basically, my mom, her parents are both from Ireland, and so they came from Ireland to Chicago, and so I've got like Irish blood in me, meaning like I look the way I do because I'm Irish, Swedish, and French, like. If I was... You're American. Yeah, but it's like your ethnicity and... Yeah. And so, but I am American, yes. I. 
It's yes. interesting. I, I mean, in England, you wouldn't consider... Like, I'm half Irish because yeah. my dad's from yeah. Ireland. Yeah. But we don't go into Ireland. quarters. But I guess it's because America's a younger country. Yeah, exactly. I, I get so it. I do get nuts. it. So Like, no yeah. one's really... F- yeah, I get yeah. it. I totally get it. But, okay. So, so yeah. So, I was, like, slightly... Because I don't want you saying that sort of thing, ideally, to Alfie or Poppy, telling them that they're straight when they're little kids. Because they don't they're not sexual beings yet like they're they're just children you know you why you have mentioned alfie being gay though no i have you have as a joke to as you joke. maybe but this video was a joke yeah but i i didn't say to alfie you're gay no. it was like but it was a joke prob- you... i i don't think that alfie's gay i don't he i don't we can't tell no no and if he is that'd be fine no by me no but i don't think that I don't know what the sexuality of our kids are because no. they're literal toddlers. Exactly. You know, I think you and I were jo- having a private jokey conversation. Yeah. And I, I don't know what I said. You said that you made a joke about it, which is fine. And I didn't get upset. I said like, he might be gay. We could hope so. Like, as a, like but that. it was like yeah. a joke, yeah, it was you a know, joke. it yeah. wasn't, yeah. I don't push that on the kids. No. They can be whatever. I won't want. push any, yeah. any, anything on the kids. Yeah. Nothing. No, no, Political, yeah. no uh, straight, gay, no yeah. anything. Yeah. I'm not going to push anything on the kids. But I feel like I need to see more of your content to know what all this... You said out- that last time. What all this outrage is about. I know, but I'm trying to keep peace in my life. Outrage is about anything that isn't, uh, doesn't... Anything that goes against this authoritarian, woke, liberal viewpoint is considered outrageously offensive. Mm-hmm. I haven't said anything outrageously offensive. It's just people are so offended by it because not yeah. a lot of people talk about it. But some people do. Yeah. For example, Andrew Tate did an interview with Tucker Carlson last week and it was amazing. 12 million oh, views. God. And 12 million views <laughs> on a day. People want to hear yeah. this side of the argument because where do you get it? Shut down on YouTube. Shut down on TikTok. My TikTok. But got do you, taken do you not think that back. Andrew Tate is like incredibly misogynistic? No, I don't. I don't. He literally was arrested for human trafficking. No charge. No charge was brought against. He's him. talked openly about basically being a pimp. He's 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 talked about it. Why has no woman come forward? I literally see clips where he's insanely misogynistic they cut, and I'm they like cut to, to make him to make him look like that but okay. I think he's very interesting and I think he's a voice that needs to be heard especially for men men All need right. a voice like okay that. well I disagree so there's that now one thing one thing one thing, <laughs> one thing. why did that interview get 12 million views in one day I don't know because no other media will, will allow a conversation do you ever, like do you ever hate watch like you watch someone who's polarizing who you don't necessarily like, but you know it's going to be like juicy and offensive. You know something? I feel like Andrew Tate is a good hate watch. I've like got... as me, so a feminist woman, right. like who it, Andrew Tate is like the enemy, right? From everything I've heard, like I, I, I suppose I need to do more Andrew Tate research. If there was a war, but I'm saying I would, want... ha- I would hate watch him. If there was a war, you'd want guys like Andrew Tate going and fighting, right? A woman wouldn't go and fight in a war. Um, that's not necessarily true. But do you want to fight in a war? Me, if we were invading? me, me you personally, personally yeah. absolutely not. That would right, be there terrible. You there you go. All the people I hate watch are people that I used to like. Wait. People that I used to love, I now hate watch. Get out of here. Yeah. Mark Maron. But see, you hate watch. So there is a place for that. So the, the 12 million views is probably like 50% conservative men who like lacked a father figure who are looking for a man to like look up to and yeah. whatever. Yeah. Because women are watching him, let's be honest. And then the other 50% of the that 12 million is probably hate watching. Well, the, young guys don't have any father figures because yeah. men are being feminized in our society. They're being told to be more like women. I mean, I do think that part of the issue in our marriage, like we, we talked yeah, about yesterday. big time. Stephen and I went to lunch yesterday because we get along. We do get along. We get along. We're together in perfect harmony. Wow. <laughs> side by side on my piano keyboard ebony and ivory although you, neither of us did is you just black. make that song no uh, oh, Steve Wonder and Paul McCartney 
Black and white. Black and white keys. <laughs> okay. That was their song. Keep singing it. Ebony and ivory. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to yeah. talk about okay. co-parenting. Okay. Because I want to do this right. Okay. And I feel like a lot of people watching are probably co-parenting or mm-hmm. attempting to co-parent. Yeah. And I know it could be really difficult. I've heard horror stories and I've heard really great success stories. Yeah. So I want to be the success story. Me too. Don't you? Yeah. So I feel like we're doing okay, but I feel like we could even learn more about it. Right. So what I did here is I pulled up a little article oh. on how to co-parent from the experts. Well, so, where is this article from so, before you go there? Women's health. See, there you go. I knew it would be that from that angle. I knew it. Dude, knew then it. find a men's health yes, one. Find, find a, a men's I health bet, one. Now, watch these questions. I bet, I bet they lean a certain way. Let's see. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Number one, embrace the co-parenting mantra of be consistent, respectful, and kind. Well. So as you establish your ground rules for co-parenting, remember to put your and your ex's differences on the back burner in the interest of um, your child or children. Right. Love that. Yeah. Because we're just talking about how we're politically different yeah. we have different views you literally are eating only meat now mm-hmm. just steak mm-hmm. all the time kind of all diet. okay Go so on, we'll get that, <laughs> to that in a minute that's new though that makes so me, I fine know how I'm gonna feel about that <laughs> if you call me violently ill <laughs> i haven't been ill yet i know and that's cool so whatever works for you yeah. right yeah. but so and i've been vegan for freaking 12 I years i was vegan for 15 years right before this by the way, this podcast is sponsored by Green Chef. Y'all, Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating clean. I absolutely love this company. It has options for every single lifestyle, whether you're vegetarian or vegan or paleo. I'm vegan and it has tons of amazing options for me. It's also sustainable. You end up wasting a lot less food because they send you the exact portions you need to cook your meals. These recipes take like 30 minutes or less to make. It's super creative, it's fun. You're actually cooking your meals. What I love about this is first of all the meals taste amazing they're super healthy and it sends me stuff that I wouldn't normally make like this orange miso tofu sauteed green beans charred rice with carrots and peanut sauce so good dude and I wouldn't normally make it it also has like a green goddess sandwich which is squash bell peppers kale olives on a ciabatta with potato wedges Stop it! These are all nutritionist approved recipes, including meals under 700 calories, protein packed meals with at least 40 grams of protein, plant rich vegan and vegetarian meals featuring certified organic produce, good for you grains and plant-based proteins. Takes 30 minutes or less for most meals. It's super creative, fun, healthy. There hasn't been one dish that I've made with Green Chef that I haven't loved. Go to greenchef.com slash idiot50 and type in the discount code idiot50 to get, you guessed it, 50% off your order plus free shipping. Back to the podcast. So I like that, to put your and your ex's differences on the back burner in the interest of what will most benefit your children. Okay. When co-parenting, Uh, When co-parents create a joint agreement to bedtime, social rules, phone, and computer use agreements, the kids know their parents have a united front. This gives children a great deal of safety. (laughs) Are you just going to read this whole article? Yes, I am. And hold on. Safety and stability because they know that no matter which parent they are with, the rules will be the same. And when the agreements are safe, stable, and reasonable, everyone will feel much more positive and steady in the long run. Right. So what do you think about that? That's number one tip. Yeah. What is, so what is it again? It's, it's, it's a consistent. Embrace, embrace the co-parenting mantra of be consistent, yeah. respectful, yeah. and kind. Okay. I, I fall down on consistency. I'll admit that. Okay. You change your mind every day about what the <laughs> parameters are. These are the problems we so have. So consistency. So we yeah, both need to work on, to work on consistency. being consistent. Yeah. Love that. So consistency. We both have to work on consistency. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. I think that that probably, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but I think the our neuro spicy brains make it a little harder to be consistent. Right. For me, I find it difficult to be so regimented. And I feel like that's a symptom of ADHD a little bit. Is like you're not 
you're just but not the most. You're right. I shouldn't affirm it. I should affirm yeah. that we're conscientious and organized, and you know. Yeah, we had a big argument the other day. Jesus, screaming it's, match, which doesn't happen often. No, enough. that's ha- hasn't happened since we separated. I know. Um, and that was about this. Yeah. It. Yes. Yeah. It was. Yes. Yeah. It was about yeah consistency or just sticking to what we said yes which yeah okay number two this is kind of a crazy statement okay but i'm reading this for the first time just so you know so i just pulled this up yeah we can find a men's health one next okay Okay, here we go this is going to be a feminist one well no it just says it's just pretty extreme it says what does it say love your child more than you hate the other parent I don't hate you, so no, that's not an issue. Either. No, next. And then it just says, if you don't have the greatest dynamic with your ex or harbor negative feelings towards them. Oh, let, right. Let, Loz, yeah, I get it. Yeah. People let, who are split up sometimes hate each other. Exactly. Yeah. More often than not. So let this phrase be your mantra and keep repeating it to yourself whenever you feel like lashing out. The child's love is more important than whatever. And hate is such a horrible, strong word. It is. Too. Yeah. So boo to that. Okay. Number three, use a website or app to communicate more effectively. Well, we don't need to do that. But some people do. Some people need... That's weird. Yeah. If they... I think if they do have a tumultuous relationship, they communicate. There are like apps. Yeah. There's apps? Yeah. What? Like, because if one partner could be like verbally or emotionally abusive or something like that or right. harass or whatever the apps are all everything's like documented i think huh. yeah and it just keeps the <laughs> co-parents in line right so i don't know some people find it really effective wow so that's okay i didn't have even heard of that that's news to me like firing off at 3 a.m text rants to your ex about how they missed the enrollment deadline for your kids dance class helps no one to right. foster strong communication free of personal gripes or emotional baggage stark suggests using the talking parents or our family wizard apps to instill healthy co-parenting practices with these tools parents can inform the other parent about things like medical appointments activity choices etc huh. The hard and fast rule is not to discuss your relationship with each other. Keep on topic and discuss only what your child needs. With secure messaging, shared calendars, a place to share expenses, recorded calls, and more, these apps help streamline and encourage practical and respectful communication between co-parents. Yeah, I mean, we don't need... The good news is we've we've agreed on every single point of our... um divorce yeah now totally for, as of yesterday because we we want what's fair it's yeah. like it's not i don't think either of us are being unfair or I greedy don't. or no or spiteful no. Or, or vindictive like none of that no, no it's none like of that. that's gross no right that was pretty Definitely. effortless yeah it was that is possible yeah because i genuinely believe like the happier you are and the more successful and happier you are, the better it is for our kids yeah. and the better it is for our relationship. I agree. Number four, have a brief monthly parental team meeting. Love that. Yeah. I would definitely yeah. do that. Regular check-ins foster solid communication skills and also help you nip any budding issues from, from the outset. Keep right. the meeting focused on your youngsters or your youngsters' well-beings and set a time limit of under 30 minutes which we don't necessarily have to that might be right yeah yeah (laughs) we can still walk okay talk to each other with respect do not talk over each other and try not to be condescending i think we're pretty good at that are we pretty good at that like i want to say we are it's funny though when i came in today i saw like i went into his kitchen to get a water And I saw a pan on the stove and I genuinely was excited because Stephen never cooked. That was always me. And so I was excited to see 
<laughs> what? I went into defense mode a little bit. I was excited to see what he cooked. I was like, ooh, what'd you make? Because I genuinely wanted to know what he's cooking these days. It wasn't anything <laughs> to do with like whether it was meat or not. That didn't even cross my mind. I was in my head going, was it tofu? Was it no. vegetables? I didn't know. But I, I've only started this. And then this. you, what? Got defensive. I got defensive because I was feeling judged. But I wasn't judging No, you. but your eyes did. <laughs> I was genuinely curious about what you were cooking. Your eyes judged. But I didn't even know it was steak. So how would I have judged that? We might, yeah. I didn't even know. And I've only been doing it for two days. I had them. I had my, my, so. Where did you get the steak? Whole Foods. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm taking it seriously. Because you know me, I like to try extreme diets. Yes, this is my you thing. freaking do. This I ate potatoes for two weeks. Two weeks straight, he only ate potatoes. Yeah. Nothing else. I love but it. But potatoes for 14 days. I love doing stuff like this. And I have to admit, as psychotic as it sounded, you did lose all the weight you wanted to lose. It was. Yeah. So it, it was called the mono diet where you eat one thing yeah. for two weeks straight and it did freaking work. Yeah. So... He's there's something to his madness. Yeah, and I. Th but I whoa, what is this one? Hmm? It's just steak, or are yeah. you Jordan Peterson? Yeah, just steak from yesterday to, from today. Oh, so you're eating just steak yeah. now? Mm -hmm. But for real, nothing else, no fruit or no, vegetables. Nothing. Oh my god. <laughs> no fruit. Only one meal a day because I like being hungry. I feel like more more to it. when I'm hungry. I feel I feel good when I'm hungry. I like to be hungry caffeinated I understand right I you're understand. like that too I understand yeah. I'm eating more though right I'm like I'm eating you needed to put on a little bit I have it. yeah that's good you think I'm too skinny not now but you, you was a point there where you you said to me people are leaving funny comments and then you showed me the video and I had to say I didn't agree with the way they'd yeah. said it but I did say that I felt that that, that was right that I was too skinny yeah it's just going through a hard time, I think. Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. I, me too. I, yeah. I'd lost a ton of weight throughout all this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so you're not eating fruits or vegetables no. or nuts? No. Just cow? Yeah. Oh, God. How long, <laughs> how long are you doing this? Till it makes me feel sick. Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm scared. This is what everyone's, everyone I've told this to is like, be careful, you're going to get sick. If, when I first I'm ate meat. I'm scared for you. When I first ate meat that one night, I did it at that men's group that I was in. And all the guys were like, steady, steady. Because I was going crazy. I had a bit and I was like, oh my God. And I was eating loads of it. And everyone was like, calm down, you're going to get ill. Didn't get ill at all. Yeah, but to just eat steak, how is that balanced? It isn't balanced, I don't think. But so neither is potatoes. But what's your goal in doing it? Just to see what happens. To see how it changes my mindset. Your my, mindset. Yeah. So it's a mental thing. Hmm. It's not nothing to do with your physicality. No. Okay. Okay, just... I, I mean, like experimenting with food. Could you go to like a general, like a physician and just tell him at least what you're doing? Oh. Monitor? I mean, I could. <laughs> Am I going to? No! All right, but eventually will you reintroduce some fruits and vegetables as well? Yes. Okay. Eventually. Great. Can we make a deal on yes. that? Yes. You got to be around a long time for yeah. the kids. I don't want you getting high cholesterol and right. high blood pressure from eating only red meat. Okay. Yeah. But I understand you want to do experiments. I want to. I want to experiment to see what happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> You're wild. Okay. Number five. Accept that the co-parent is still your child's parent. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're more of the parent right now because I'm f focused on yes. work a little bit. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, they live with me yeah. and I sleep in a toddler bed now. <laughs> Officially. Yeah. Officially. He came to get me at midnight. Big bar bed. Does he do that every single Pretty night? Pretty much, yeah. He comes to get you. Yeah. It's a phase. And so I just know he's four it's gonna pass and so now i just sleep in a toddler bed because he wants me to and i don't want to have the fight at two in the morning and whatever he wants snuggles so let me give him some snuggles how cute that he goes on the school bus oh he loves the school bus. <laughs> 
So then in the morning, we wake up. We woke Love up and in the toddler bed. And I was like, oh, we got to get ready for the school bus. And he's like, play school, school bus, school no. bus. Yes, he loves it. He gets so excited. We get dressed. He normally has a bubble bath and then a shower. He likes both because <laughs> he's got to wash the bubbles off. He loves to be super clean. He does. Mm-hmm. And now he'll wear anything. Yeah, that's so good. He went through a phase of only wearing... Like Christmas clothes. Two outfits, and they happen to be like Christmas themed, <laughs> like in the summer. But he would only wear the He would only wear Christmas. Yeah. You know who else is obsessed with Christmas? Poppy. She's constantly talking about Christmas really? when she comes here. <laughs> Christmas, Christmas. Really? Yeah. I don't blame her. Christmas is a good time. Yeah. That's a good time. Be weird this year. It's going to be weird this year. No, I think we should still celebrate together. No, I do too. Don't Last you? year was super weird. But we still in, uh, celebrated yeah, it's, together. Yeah, last year was super weird. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yes, it yes, was. Yes, it really was. It was. Yes, it yes, was. It was. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> but I'm not even gonna say. Neither am I. <laughs> Don't. A lot of people in the comments trying to work out what we talk about when we say these things wild yeah wild jails <laughs> i had a good time in jail okay what okay but we still did it we still celebrated yeah even even so you begged me hmm? you begged me to spend christmas together did i yes i wanted to i know but this year we're getting it's good for the kids i know that but this that that was insane. That was insane. Yeah, so it was a little off the rails at that time. A little? Yeah. You but called me a psycho on the, our argument. <laughs> and I have been I have been working so, since January. To be less of a psycho. I'm not a psycho. And you shouldn't say that. Oh, it's so more nefrangish. <laughs> I'm literally not offended. Oh, that's so woke of you. <laughs> You're offended? <laughs> Oh wait, 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 well, wait, I wait, shouldn't wait, say wait, wait, that. Wait, wait. Is that no. politically incorrect? There's a funny to call you a psycho? You know oh oh you know physical fitness is all right now, according to CNBC. So you're and... just you're changing the subject. No, it's a, an article came out yesterday that said being physically fit is all right and racist. Seriously. Okay, you're finding really extreme this shit. This was on MSNBC. Normal people don't think that. MSNBC is mainstream. That's not a weird they literally had, and then they had a picture of a man doing this, and then behind him there were people, Zeke Highland. That was their cover <laughs> okay. shot. All right. What? That's, yeah, that, that, that doesn't make much sense. They want us me. all blue haired and like, really? Can't get uh, out of the house. Would you dye your hair 600? blue? Hold on. <laughs> for $300,000. But you have to keep it blue. <laughs> you have to keep it blue for five years. Five years is a long time. No. 300K? One million dollars. Five years blue hair. <laughs> yeah, I would do it. Really? Right now, yeah. I, right now, I'd do it for a thousand dollars. Okay. All right. So, number five. Ex- uh, thousand dollars? <laughs> really? Yeah. All right, I'll pay Okay, it. great. Okay. Yeah, you got all the money. I. That's not true. That's of actually... It. Most of it. No. Okay. That's actually not true. We were very low and we're splitting what we had. Yeah. And so, no. But that's okay because not everything's about money. No. And we're going to be fine. Yeah. If we stay sober yeah. and just keep working and focusing on our mental yeah. health, well, we're going to be fine. It's funny because I really try. always been fine. I try to not get involved, but sometimes I just bite my lip. When you tell me about certain things, I'm like... Because I've been... I'm not in hustle mode like Steven. I've been working less. My goal is to be a really great mom and just work less and be in my feminine energy. Yeah. That's what it's I want. It's a good goal. I don't... I still want to work. I still do like creating, but I'm just not... I don't have that same... No, I bite my lip about some of the advice that you get. I'm like, oh. who's given her this terrible advice? Because right. you've had some terrible advice. In your opinion. I mean, come on. <sighs> Number five, accept that the the co-parent is still your child's parent. Oh, sorry. We read this yeah, one. Yeah, we read that. I've, I accept it. Okay? Yeah. Number six, see a therapist who specializes in co-parenting. Now, is this together or separate? 
I don't know. If you've been trying to deal with a particularly difficult ex to no avail, sometimes you just need to call a professional. So I guess separate. Couples therapy is balls. Couples therapy? Balls. We've never... It's balls. We, 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 we never had a good experience. Yeah, we tried it back in the day. And then we... I tried to get us to go later on in that. Didn't. Yeah. But we had some funny experiences. We did. Remember that one woman that was high as a kite the whole time? Yes. She was like, Geraldine. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you guys got to go. <laughs> She's like, you guys got to go to my psychiatrist. Yeah, that's right. Her drug dealer. <laughs> and then I went to her psychiatrist and he was yes. like, within five minutes of meeting me, he's, he's like, you're bipolar and I'm going to prescribe you lithium. Lith that's hardcore lithium he goes what do you do to handle stress i said well i love to do yoga that really helps me and he goes i can make you feel like you just got out of a yoga class 24 hours a day that's a drug i dealer. mean and i told him i was a sober addict yeah that's nuts isn't it that's nuts. but that was geraldine's psychiatrist she was like you gotta go no oh, she, she was, was she was high all was like the this. time uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> And then the first one we went to was like 12. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, so this... <laughs> she was literally 12. Like, you guys are my first clients. <laughs> yeah, we were, I think we were. Yeah. It was in a church. Remember that? Yeah. Church basement. Yeah. yeah. And then we went to another woman who was like an aspiring actress and like 75 and like... Oh, eight, my and she, God. She hated men. So she, she was So she nuts. was scowling at Stephen the whole yes. time. He didn't even have to she say anything. Hated she hated me. Like, and then remember I came in wearing like little blue shorts yes. one day and she was like, cover up. That's like she was right. judging my yeah. outfit. Remember she that? was nuts. She was and then she, certified. And then she nuts. used to do this thing called walking. She she thought she was psychic. <laughs> and she, she right? And she, yeah. she would walk people, meaning she could channel who you were talking about. And so I was talking about my dad and she was like, stop. I'm going to walk your father. That's Basically right. like have my dad's energy go into her and she's going to walk as if she's him. I hadn't really said much about him. So this is just her thinking that she can channel my dad. Do you remember that? Or was I that do. a solo one? And she was no, like... I, I remember you telling me about it. She's like, I'm going to channel your dad. And then she, um, she was like, Hey, I'm <laughs> watching the game. Shut up, you. Somebody get me another beer. And like that, it was like the most cliche, oh my like God. drunk dad <laughs> impression. But it didn't sound like my dad, really. Well, I guess right. that kind of. I was going to say some of that. Don't sound like your dad. <laughs> Hold on. <gasps> Maybe, Maybe she, she was did. right. Did she walk? Didn't she walk someone for you? No. I don't think so. It was so cringy. Number six. Yeah, see the therapist. I mean, that's good advice. We No, it's not. It's terrible advice. Wait, hold on. You freaking go to a therapist literally twice a week. And My I promise you, you amazing. talk about us. It was not couples therapy, though. No, no, no. This is see a therapist who specializes in co-parenting. This just says, if you have been trying to deal with a particularly difficult ex, sometimes you need to call a professional. Right. That's all that says. So you do see a therapist. I do, yeah. My sponsor is a therapist, so I'm like, I see a therapist, but I... Oh, is she? She is, yeah. Huh. She's a licensed marriage and family counselor. Wow. But I should get an app, like, you know, I should get that as well. Yeah. Because you find it beneficial, right? Your therapy? Oh, yeah. Really? It's right. It's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, number seven, create a shared family calendar to stay organized. Yeah. Love that. Except you never look at a calendar entry. Oh my you god. You haven't done it once in your entire life. Oh my god. Have you ever looked at a calendar entry? I uh, yes. Recently I've looked a couple of times yeah. in my life. Right. It's not to say that I can't. <laughs> if you have the willingness, you can oh do anything. Oh my god, here we go. You can do anything with a little willingness. No? All right. No faith in me, huh? I do, but you you okay. No, you're right. It doesn't come naturally to me to do that. But I do, I think, okay, keep the calendar to keep everyone abreast of school, social events, medical appointments, and sport schedules. That's a bit later on in the, in yeah. the kids' lives. But. Okay, number eight, document and date your issues in writing. So Weird. Number nine, get on the same page about school. I mean, I definitely 
feel like we are right now. Yeah, I feel right. That and then yeah. as they get older, yeah, like there's that great school down the street that yeah. would start when they're five. That's all inclusive. Yeah. Number ten, don't make your child. Oh dear, how do you say that word? Intermediary. Inter intermediary. Don't make them like the, take sides. Yeah. Don't make them. Don't make them mediate. Right. I mean, I would means. never do that, and you would never do that. Don't make your child the intermediary. Do not expect the children to be the messenger or go in between. I would not. No. 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 Absolutely not. Number 11, make a pandemic agreement. What? What? Because this year saw... Oh, this was written in 2020. Okay. <laughs> okay. Number 12. I was going to say something about that, but you'll get banned off YouTube. So, I won't. so don't. Number 12, remember you don't have to agree on everything. Yeah, we don't agree on everything. No. In fact, this the beginning of this podcast was showing that. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you might feel like you have to cave on your opinions in order to appease on your ex. Other times you, you might feel like the future is hopeless if they can't come around to your view on something. Be kind to yourself and know this is not the case. It's not important for the child to experience parents that agree on everything, but rather parents that are able to communicate their opinions in a healthy manner. I mean, I think that makes yeah, sense to me. I think so. So not so bad for women's health. See, it wasn't actually so bad as I thought. It All right, number be. 13. Th this list is never, there's oh only 50 things on the list. No, I think this is the last. Number 13, focus on the business of parenting. Hmm. Look, you've come to terms with the fact that your ex isn't going to become the Paddington bear of co-parenting <laughs> overnight or potentially ever. But if you shift your attention away from your interpersonal dynamics, you may find some workable solutions. Hmm. So be prepared to approach all interactions as a business transaction. Schedule a time to meet or discuss co-parenting concerns. I mean, that's cool. I guess I can see how that would be helpful for yeah, some people. I guess. Right? 14. <laughs> no. <laughs> Disagreeing over an issue? Try the two solutions approach. What's that? Williams suggests employing this technique at a co-parenting check-in if you can't come to an agreement on a particular situation with your kiddos. Each parent can give two possible solutions per issue and discuss the advantage and disadvantage of each as it relates oh to God, the child. This is making my brain hurt. And not themselves. We, so neither as, of us are like this kind of person. Hold on. Hold the phone. I know the kind of people that would do this, like very type A, like... To eventually organized. come up with a solution they can agree on. Once one parent agrees, it's important for them to follow up. Okay, but each parent can give two possible solutions per issue. Hmm. I don't know. Is it over yet? <laughs> I don't know. Yes, like yes, <laughs> yes, over. We did it. We did it. I, good. I didn't like the questionnaire so much. You did but it? But the stuff we talked about was good. You didn't like it? I liked it. I really? liked the first seven and then it got a bit weird. Yeah, but it's also helpful and, and necessary, I think. Yeah. For us. Don't you want to do this right for them? For yeah, I do. I'm taking it very seriously. Yeah. Although I do need to be better at consistency and uh, yeah, I just need to get better at that. Mm. I just want to make sure that you stick to the days and times and that if you don't, you give me notice. Yeah. That's my main yeah. thing. I have no problem with the kids living with me. I mean, literally Steven's a mile down the road, so they love you so much and they love seeing you yeah, and spending do. time with you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it is working. Yeah, it is working. Um, we just want to make sure we stay consistent. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And I'll work on, I guess, being more decisive. Right? I need, so yeah, I think we both need to work on sticking to things. Yes. Yeah. Let's stick to things. Okay. That's good. That feels good. Yeah. I feel good. Good. Well, thank you for watching. Any comments, um, leave them below. <laughs> Any comments, leave them below. <laughs> Any comments, leave them below. What? I think they get that. Why am I so awkward? This comment. <laughs> Why am I so awkward? I'm only joking. Any comments, leave them below. <laughs> <laughs> Any comments, leave them below. <laughs> Don't leave them above. Don't leave them to the sides, but leave them below. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say? 
No. Doing this. No. Okay. I think I'm done. Thank you for having me on your podcast. You're welcome. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. 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 bye.